Hello, 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 Keisha Johnson here. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay, so I will know that you are watching. And if you are tuning in to any of my broadcasts for the very first time, go ahead and type a number one in the comments. And as you all are checking in this morning, go ahead and type in the comments, hashtag I will read my Bible, hashtag I will read my Bible, and let me know that you are here. Good morning, Bernadette. Go ahead and type in the comments, God did it again. It's a great day to be alive. Good morning, Tanya. I'm so thankful and so grateful that God has allowed us to see another day. Amen. Go ahead and type in the comments, hashtag, I will read my Bible. Good morning, Sheila. Come on in with the heart of worship on this morning. Good morning, Natasha. So good to see you. Come on in this morning. Great morning. Afternoon or evening, whatever time you're catching this replay, please pray. Hello to you as well. Good morning. After you've shared, go ahead and type in the comments, hashtag, share. Good morning, good morning. It's so good to see you all. Hello, hello everyone. Say there's none like you. Nobody, nobody. 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 Say there is none like you. Nobody. There's none like you jesus good morning maria so good to see you everyone good morning good morning go ahead come on in good morning everyone great morning Good morning. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank y'all so much. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, Tamika. Tamiko. Good morning, Danielle. Thank you, Tanya. All right, I'm pinning that now. Type in the comments, there's nobody like you. There's none. Say there's none like you. Good morning. Type in the comments, hashtag, I will read my Bible. Good morning. Nobody. Good morning, everyone. So good to see you. Good morning, Evangelist Rosa. There's none like you. Say, nobody. Good morning. Come on in with the heart of worship this morning. There's none like you. Good morning. There's none like you. Good morning, everyone. That's right. There's no one like you. Good morning. So good to see you all. So glad to be back after the weekend. Mondays are amazing. Yeah, type that in the comments. Mondays are amazing. Good morning, Lucille. I'm always so excited to see you all. If you're tuning in to the broadcast for the first time, welcome. Again, my name is Keisha Johnson. If you're here for the first time, don't be shy. Go ahead and type a number one in the comments so we can welcome you. We are reading. That's right. It's a great day to be alive. We are reading through the one year Bible together. Y'all type in the comments, hashtag 20 minutes. It takes us 20 minutes each day um, to read the word together. So we meet Monday through Friday. We read on our own on the weekends. If there's a replay available, I usually share the replay on the weekends. So go ahead, grab your Bibles, grab your journals. If you haven't already, Make sure that you've anointed your hands. Let's type in the comments, my hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch prospers. Everything that I touch multiplies. Everything I touch, amen, turns to gold. 
these blessed oily anointed hands will lay hands on the sick they will be healed and they will recover in jesus name amen right how do i know because the bible tells me so yes all right so let's go ahead and get ready to pull up the one year bible and make sure um just a reminder as we are listening we are actively listening good morning valerie good morning tanisha good morning to all we are making sure that we are actively listening um, for a word, a phrase, a verse, just um, something that stands out to us as we are reading so that we can just kind of uh, take some time meditating. All right, so let's dive in if you haven't already. Go ahead and type at least one thing in the comments. Type at least one thing in the comments uh, that you're thankful for in today. And listen, I'm thankful for life and a sound mind. I'm thankful for life and a sound mind. So this morning I, I, I woke up and I got on Facebook. Uh, I will say <clears throat> I scrolled, <clears throat> excuse me, I scrolled my news feed before coming on live and I don't normally do that. I'll come on to kind of say good morning. I'll come on to post our devotional and the verse for the day, right? I think I've been doing that consistently for like the last six or seven years, right? And so many of you kind of know my routine. But today I kind of jumped on and I scrolled and I saw um, Pastor Hannah's post um, that said, did Will Smith um, just slap Chris Rock and curse him out on television? And I almost stopped there and I should have just stopped there. And I thought, hmm, what happened? Like, I, we don't have cable just because we choose not to have it, haven't had it in years. So I don't really watch television. If there's something I need to watch or something I need to, I don't know, I just don't watch television that much. And I haven't for, for years. And so I kind of, why did I Googled it? And so I saw what happened and my spirit was so unsettled, right? So... I immediately kind of just stopped and just prayed because, you know, obviously, clearly there's something going on. He seems so angry, so hurt, so much, um, so much going on. So anyway, all that to say, we're not going to take too much time here, but you all just let's let's just pray. Right. Let's just make sure that um, you, you, if you have a list, add them to your prayer list. So I'm going to just stop and um, kind of we'll just kind of jump into the one year Bible. But. My spirit was so unsettled after um, seeing that clip this morning. Um, like I said, that's not what this is about this morning, but um, that's kind of where I was, you know, just our men, you know, praying for our men in general. Yes, it's a great day to be alive. So I just wanted to say that this morning and I don't usually. So obviously the Lord wanted me to see that because I usually don't scroll my news feed um, before coming on Waking Early for His Glory. So. All right, let's dive in. If you haven't, make sure you type at least one thing in the comments. Um, so, Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to come together, God. Another opportunity to fellowship and to spend time in your word on today. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. And we thank you for a sound mind. Anybody else thankful for a sound mind on today? We thank you, God, for a sound mind. We thank you for not allowing the enemy <clears throat> to have his way with us. Um, Father, we just thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Yes, thankful for God's peace. Yes. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and press play. I did not grab my water, so I need to go grab my water. Um, but let's go ahead and press play, and then I'll talk some more about that um, in the end. All right, let's do it. We'll, we'll do that. March 28th. I need to go grab my water. In the Old Testament, we're in Deuteronomy chapter 9. Now, what's going on here is Moses is pointing out dangers that God's people must avoid. Forgetting God's goodness, uh, becoming self-satisfied and complacent after a great victory. Uh, compromising with the, enemy. the volume is okay to type a number two for me, please. About a danger that all believers constantly face, and that is the reappearance of an old sin. In Israel's case, that sin was rebellion against God. But we are a new generation, the people might have argued. The old generation that died in the wilderness was guilty of rebellion. We are different. Ah, but Moses warned them. He knew that... Human nature is the same from one generation to another. The volume is and good. And people rarely learn from the mistakes of others. 
See, the sin that we think we have conquered is the very one that will conquer us. We have to lean on the Lord. Now, your greatest fear may type come in, before the battle. I will lean on the Lord. But your greatest danger may be after the battle. If victory makes you proud, well, you'll fall. But if God's blessing humbles you, you will succeed. The whole point here is God is able to make you stand. Let's begin with today's reading from the Old Testament. Yes, I will lean on the Lord. March 28th, Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 1, through chapter 10, verse 22. Hear, O Israel, today you're about to cross the Jordan River to occupy the land belonging to nations much greater and more powerful than you. They live in cities with walls that reach to the sky. They are strong and tall, descendants of the famous Anakite giants. You've heard the saying, who can stand up to the Anakites? But the Lord your God will cross over ahead of you like a devouring fire to destroy them. He will subdue them so that you will quickly conquer them and drive them out, just as the Lord has promised. After the Lord your God has done this for you, don't say to yourselves, the Lord has given us this land because we are so righteous. No, it is because of the wickedness of the other nations that he is doing it. It is not at all because you are such righteous, upright people that you are about to occupy their land. The Lord your God will drive these nations out ahead of you only because of their wickedness and to fulfill the oath he had sworn to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will say it again. The Lord your God is not giving you this good land because you are Amen. righteous or you are not. You are a stubborn people. Hmm. Remember how angry you made the Lord your God out in the wilderness? From the day you left Egypt until now, you have constantly rebelled against him. Remember how angry you made the Lord at Mount Sinai, where he was ready to destroy you? That was when I was on the mountain receiving the tablets of stone inscribed with the covenant that the Lord had made with you. I was there for 40 days and 40 nights. And all that time... I ate nothing in 40 and drank days, no water. 40 nights. The Lord gave me the covenant, the tablets on which God himself had written all the words he had spoken to you from the fire on the mountain. At the end of the 40 days and nights, the Lord handed me the two stone tablets with the covenant inscribed on them. Then the Lord said to me, Go down immediately because the people you led out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have already turned from the way I commanded them to live and have cast an idol for themselves from gold. The Lord said to me, I have been watching this people and they are extremely stubborn. Leave me alone so I may destroy them and erase their stubborn name from under and heaven. Rebellious. Mm -hmm. Then I will make a mighty nation of your descendants, a nation larger and more powerful than they are. So I came down from the fiery mountain holding in my hands the two stone tablets of the covenant. There below me, I could see the gold calf you had made in your terrible sin against the Lord your God. How quickly you had turned from the path the Lord had commanded you to follow. So I raised the stone tablets and dashed them to the ground. I smashed them before your very eyes. Then for 40 days and nights, I lay prostrate before the Lord neither eating bread nor drinking water. I did this because you had sinned by doing what the Lord hated, thus making him very angry. How I feared for you, for the Lord was ready to destroy you. But again, he listened to me. The Lord was so angry with Aaron that he wanted to destroy him. But I prayed for Aaron and the Lord spared him. Say, I took your sin, he prayed. the calf you had made. And I melted it in the fire and ground it into fine dust. I threw the dust into the stream that cascades down the mountain. You also made the Lord angry at Tabira, Massa, and Kibroth Hatahava. And at Kadesh Barnea, the Lord sent you out with this command. Go up and take the land I have given you. But you rebelled against the command of the Lord your God and refused to trust or obey him. Yes, you've been rebelling against the Lord as long as I have known you. That Listen, is why I fell I will down trust and, and obey lay before God. the Lord for 40 days and nights, 
when he was ready to destroy you. I prayed to the Lord and said, O oh, sovereign Lord, do not destroy your own people. They are your special possession, redeemed from Egypt by your mighty power and glorious strength. Overlook the stubbornness and sin of these people, but remember instead your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you destroy these people, the Egyptians will say, The Lord destroyed them because he wasn't able to bring them to the land he had sworn to give them. Mm. Or they might say, He destroyed them because he hated them. He brought them into the wilderness to slaughter them. But they are your people and your special possession, whom you brought from Egypt by your mighty power and glorious strength. At that time, the Lord said to me, Prepare two stone tablets like the first ones, and make a sacred yes. chest of wood to keep them in. Return to me on the mountain, and I will write on the tablets the same words that were on the ones Did you smashed. Have today's reading so I then can place the it? tablets in the sacred chest, the Ark of the Covenant. So I made a chest of acacia wood and cut two stone tablets like the first two. And I took the tablets up to the mountain. The Lord again wrote the terms of the covenant, the Ten Commandments, on them and gave them to me. They were the same words the Lord had spoken to you from the heart of the fire on the mountain as you were assembled below. Then I came down and placed the tablets in the Ark of the Covenant, which I had made, just as the Lord commanded me. And the tablets are still there in the Ark. The people of Israel set out from the wells of the people of Jaakin and traveled to Mozira, where Aaron died and was buried. His son, Eleazar, became the high priest in his place. Then they journeyed to Gudgoda, and from there to Jotbatha, a land with brooks of water. At that time, the Lord set apart the tribe of Levi to carry the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, to minister before the Lord, and to pronounce blessings in His name. These are still their duties. That is why the we Levites have no share or inheritance reserved for them among the other Israelite tribes. The Lord Himself is their inheritance, as the Lord your God told them. As I said before, I stayed on the mountain in the Lord's presence for forty days and nights as I had done the first time. And once again, the Lord yielded to my pleas and didn't destroy you. But the Lord said to me, get up and lead the people into the land I swore to give their ancestors so they may take possession of it. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? He requires you to fear him, to live according to his will, to love and worship him with all your heart and soul and to obey the Lord's commands and laws that I am giving you today for your own good. The highest heavens and the earth and everything in it all belong to the Lord your God. Yet the Lord chose your ancestors as the objects of his love, and he chose you, their descendants, above every other nation, as is evident today. Therefore, cleanse your sinful hearts and stop being stubborn. Thank you. The Lord your God is the God of gods and Lord of lords. He is the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no That's partiality and takes no bribes. He is no the bribes. great God. He gives justice to orphans and widows. God. He shows love to the foreigners living among you and gives them food and clothing. You too must show love to foreigners, for you yourselves were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. You must fear the Lord your God and worship him and cling to him. Your oaths must be cling in his name alone. To him. He is your God, the one who is worthy of your praise, the one who has done mighty miracles that you yourselves have seen. When your ancestors went down into Egypt, there were only 70 of them. But now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars in the sky. I'm typing, I will cling to the Lord. I will cling to the March Lord. March 28th in the New Testament, the book of Luke chapter 8. If you haven't shared, go ahead and share. I had a few people say they can't find One day, this. Jesus told this story to a large crowd that had gathered from many towns to hear him. A farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field, some seed fell on a footpath where it was stepped on and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. This seed began to grow, but...
but soon it withered and died for lack of moisture. Other seed fell among thorns that shot up and choked out the tender blades. Still, other seed fell on fertile soil. This seed grew and produced a crop 100 times as much as had been planted. When he said this, he called out, Anyone who is willing to hear should listen and understand. His disciples asked him what the story meant. He replied, Lord, make me willing You to have been hear permitted to understand, understand the secrets of the kingdom of God. But I am using these stories to conceal everything about it from outsiders, so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. They see what I do, but they don't really see. They hear what I say, but they don't understand. This is the meaning of the story. The seed is God's message. The seed that fell on the hard path represents those who hear the message, but then the devil comes and steals it away and prevents them from believing and being saved. The rocky soil represents those who hear the message with joy, but like young plants in such soil, their roots don't go very deep. They believe for a while, but they wilt when the hot winds of testing blow. The thorny ground represents those who hear and accept the message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. And so they never grow into maturity. But the good soil represents honest, good-hearted people who hear God's message, cling to it, and steadily produce a huge harvest. No one would light a lamp and then cover it up or put it under a bed. No, lamps are mounted in the open, where they can be seen by those entering the house, or everything that is hidden or secret will eventually be brought to light and made plain to all. So be sure to pay attention to what you hear. To those who are open to my teaching, more understanding Say, will be given. I will pay attention. But to those who are not <clears throat> listening, even what they think they have will be taken away from them. Once, when Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, they couldn't get to him because of the crowds. Someone told Jesus, Your mother and your brothers are outside, and they want to see you. Jesus replied, My mother and my brothers are all those who hear the message of God and obey it. Psalm chapter 69, verses 19 through 36. You know the insults I endure the humiliation and disgrace. You have seen all my enemies and know what they have said. Their insults have broken my heart and I am in despair. If only one person would show some pity, if only one would turn and comfort me, but instead they give me poison for food. They offer me sour wine to satisfy my thirst. Let the bountiful table set before them become a snare and let their security become a trap. Let their eyes go blind so they cannot see, and let their bodies grow weaker and weaker. Pour out your fury on them. Consume them with your burning anger. May their homes become desolate and their tents be deserted. To those you have punished, Let's they add insult to injury. Worry. They scoff at the pain of those you have hurt. Pile their sins up high, and don't let them go free. Erase their names from the book of life. Don't let them be counted among the righteous. I'm suffering and in pain. Rescue me, O oh God, by your saving power. Then I will praise God's name with singing, and I will honor him with thanksgiving. For this will please the Lord more than sacrificing an ox or presenting a bull with its horns and hooves. The humble will see their God at work and be glad. Let all who seek God's help live in joy. For the Lord hears the cries of his needy ones. He does not despise his people who are mm -hmm. oppressed. <clears throat> Praise him, O oh, heaven and earth, the seas and all that move in them. For God will save Jerusalem and rebuild the towns of Judah. His people will live there and take possession of the land. The descendants of those who obey him will inherit the land, and those who love him will live there in safety. I'll tell you, thank God, I thank you. Mm. Proverbs chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. 
The Lord approves of those who are good, but he condemns those who plan wickedness. Wickedness never brings stability. Mm. Only the godly have deep roots. Mm. 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 So, Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you, Father, for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. So good today. So good today. Not a lot of commentary. We kind of just jumped right in and got to the word today. So if you haven't already, I think I saw some of you doing this. If you haven't already, go ahead and begin to share your takeaways in the comments, the word, the phrase, the verse, the verses um, that stood out to you. Um, just whatever it is that God spoke to you through his word. Just lots of little reminders um, as we were reading today. So I wrote down a few things that I wanted to share with you all today and just... Uh, and it's coming from, I'll say, Deuteronomy 9.3. So you all can type that in the kind of comments, Deuteronomy 9.3. Deuteronomy 9, verse 3. Is it 9.3 or 10.3? 9.3. Deuteronomy 9.3. And so as we read today, we read that um, Moses promised the people that God would go before them and that he would fight for them. That God would go before them and that God would fight for them. He promised the people that God would go before them and God would fight for them. And I use um, Deuteronomy 9.3 as a scripture reference. I wrote down uh, three questions for us to ask ourselves today. Y'all type personal devotion in the comments, personal devotion. As we, um, after this broadcast, whatever time of day, spend some time in personal devotion today. And I will share um, the soap journaling um, guide in um, in the comments again and I say guide because we use it hey Marion good morning so good I didn't know you were on this morning good morning all right so the first question that we can ask ourselves is where are you or where am I running against God's activity where am I running against God's activity where am I running against God's activity the second question how well do I listen to God? Yes. How well do I listen to God? How well do I listen to God? If someone can type these questions in the comments for me. And the third question, what can I do to improve my listening skills? What can I do to improve my listening skills? Is, did someone type those in the comments? Where am I running ahead of God's activity? How well do I listen to God? And what can I do to improve my listening skills? Um, so Deuteronomy 9, 3 says, But recognize today that the Lord your God is the one who will cross you over ahead of you like a devouring fire to destroy them. He will subdue them so that you will quickly conquer them and drive them out just as the Lord has promised just as the Lord has promised. Thanks for typing those in. And so that's what I want to talk about today, how to stand still and allow God to fight for us, how to stand still and allow God to fight for us. I know someone like myself, and I don't mean like physically fighting. I don't think, I think only one, maybe one time that I remember I got into a physical fight um, outside of, you know, maybe shoving or pushing my brother or sister a time of or two, but actually getting into a physical fight. I think I only remember one, maybe one, possibly two times that that happened because I was bullied a lot, right? And bullied a lot, but that's not what we're talking about, bullied a lot. And so because of that feeling like I had to fight for myself and take up for myself all the time. Again, I'm not talking about physically fighting. So it was hard for me um, to learn how to be still and learn how to allow God to fight for me. And even still, sometimes I'm tempted to kind of just jump ahead, right, and take matters into my own hands. Anybody else? Um, so sometimes I'm tempted. So I really had to learn and, and really um, go to the word and see what the word said concerning us being still, right? Learning how to wait and allowing God to fight for me. So I wrote down a few scripture references that I want to leave you all with. And then um, just a few ways on what really what we can do when we're standing still 
and waiting on God. I don't see the comments moving. Are y'all still with me? Maybe y'all are writing, listening, but let me see a thumbs up or, or something to make sure I'm not frozen and make sure y'all are still with me. I should probably log in from my iPad. All right, I see a few thumbs up. <laughs> are y'all writing? <laughs> Just staring at me, listening. <laughs> All right, Deuteronomy 20, verse 4, if someone can type that in the comments, Deuteronomy 20, verse 4, Deuteronomy 20, verse 4 says, For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to give you the victory. Y'all type hashtag victory in the comments. I have the victory. Type hashtag victory in the comments so I can see y'all are still with me. Deuteronomy 3, 22. Deuteronomy 3, 20, 3, 22. Deuteronomy 3, 22 says, You shall not fear them, for it is the Lord your God who fights for you. For it is the Lord your God who fights for you. Y'all type in hashtag no fear in the comments. Hashtag no fear. And Exodus 14, 14, Exodus 14, 14 says, the Lord will fight for you and you only have to be silent. The Lord will fight for you and you only have to be silent. Y'all type in hashtag silent in the comments, hashtag silent. And then Psalm 27, 14, Psalm 27, 14 says, wait, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Y'all type in hashtag wait in the comments, hashtag wait in the comments. And then kind of jumping back to um, our reading in Deuteronomy um, before I um, finish here. Another verse that stood out to me. She's up so early this morning. Um, Deuteronomy 10 20 says, You must fear the Lord your God and worship him and cling to him. You must fear the Lord your God and worship him and cling to him. And that was another verse that stood out to me. And I remember reading that and literally, um, literally making a decision that day that I was going to cling to the Lord. And if I have a few minutes, I'll uh, share a little something else about that. And then another verse um, that I that, that stood out to me before I hop into what I was going to share was uh, Deuteronomy 10 verse 12. Y'all type that in the comments, Deuteronomy 10 verse 12. Um, and it says, and now Israel, what does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? He requires only that you fear the Lord your God and live in a way that pleases him and love him and serve him with all of your heart. And I'll read verse 13. And you must always obey the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own Good. So those are four things. Y'all type the number four in the comments. That we fear him, that we live in a way that pleases him, that we love him, and that we serve him with all of our heart. All right. So um, and then even as we were um, reading in Luke, the New Testament, the four types of soil. Right. Um, and just making those declarations. So, you know, as we're reading sometimes, it was verse um, it, w it was verse 8. And it says, anyone with ears to hear or with uh, um, willing, uh, I think it said in another translation, but anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. And I had you all type in the comments, make me willing to hear and understand what you say. 
because I know there was a time, right, where I always, I wasn't always willing and just thankful that God has given me a willing heart, right, to hear and understand what it is that he's saying. So quite a few verses stood out to me. All right, quite a few verses. <clears throat> so again, with that, and I share that to say, you know, God is always speaking, right? There's always going to be a word, a phrase, a verse, or verses that stand out to us. So, um... We need to kind of ask ourselves whenever we say, good morning, Jessica, whenever we say that, um, I don't know what is going on with my phone. Um, am I still here getting some little notification? We need to, um, you know, ask ourselves whenever we say, you know, we don't hear God or God is not speaking um, because God is always speaking through his word. He's always speaking like there was so much this morning that we can literally go back to so many verses, just so much this morning. Um, all right, so uh, where was I? I gave you all the five verses, right, on what the Word of God says about waiting um, and just helping us to just stand still, right, and allowing God to fight for us and not to get ahead of him. Um, and so how to stand still and allow God to fight? What does that look like? How do we do that? How do we stand still and, ag and allow God to fight? I wrote first. Um, the, the word of God, of course, is filled with lots of stories uh, where God fought on behalf of his people. And so I wrote down three stories for you all to go back and read yourselves. Um, but it's always good, you know, especially for me when I was learning how to fight, not fight, when I was learning how to be still and how to wait on God. It was important for me to go to the word and read these stories to see how God came through. Right. And y'all type in the comments if he did it before. He can do it again, right? If he did it for them, he can do it for me. And again, this, of course, not going into that stem from some some of the trust issues that I had, right? So this was a process for me learning how to be still. Um, so the first story that you all can go and read is in Genesis 31, 22 through 24. Genesis 31, 22 through 24. If someone can type that in the comments. Genesis 31, um, verses 22 through 24. Y'all all right? Someone type that in the comments. And the second story, Joshua 5, verses 13 through 15. Joshua 5, verses 13 through 15. And the third story um, that you all can go and read is in 2 Kings. And in 2 Kings 8, at 2 Kings 6, verse 8 through 23. Thank you, Peggy. So yes, that was Genesis 31, 22 through 24. Joshua 5, 13 through 15. That's right. If he did it before, he could do it again. Right? And so you don't have to go back and read all three of these stories. At least pick one um, to go back and read. And y'all type in the comments, God will fight for me. God will fight for me. And there are plenty of stories, um, but those are just three that I gave you. And then you can always find more if you need more. So um, Psalm, Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the earth. Y'all type in the comments, be still. And that was something that I had to learn to do, to be still, to be still. All right. And being still means being willing to wait. Being still means being willing to wait. Yes, that's the third one. Thank you, Peggy. Being still simply means being willing to wait. And I wasn't always willing to be still. I wasn't always willing to wait on God. Again, it's something that I had to learn. It's something that I had to practice. And the more that we practice, thank you, Cheryl, the more that we practice, um, or at least the more that I practice, the easier it got. All right. And y'all type in the comments, Lord, make me willing to wait. Make me willing to wait. Make me willing to wait. All right, so what can we do while we wait, right? We're asking God. We just prayed and asked God, make me willing to wait. So what are some things that we can do while we wait? Number one is trust God. While we wait, trust God. Or like Tanya says, while we're taking our hands off the situation, right? 
What are some things that we can do? What are some things that we can do? Trust God. It takes faith to allow God to fight. And that is why it's important, you know, as we are learning how to wait and to be still that we go to the word and read these stories because what they're going to do is help to increase our faith, right? It takes faith. And that's what without these stories in the Bible and these examples where God came through and fought on behalf of his people and gave them the victory, you know, that's going to help to build your faith. So that's why I gave you those three references or those three stories to go and read. All right. So I hope you all wrote them down. All right. So number one, trust God. It takes faith to wait and allow him to fight. Um, number two, what is the second thing? And this is not like the end all. These are just some things that I learned how to do, right, as I'm waiting. Number two, repent of sin. I always say that sin separates us from God. Like sin is like a wedge. And I always try to do this and I don't have three hands. But sin um, puts a wedge in between us and God. And anytime we have unconfessed sin, that is an open door or we give the um, enemy a foothold into our lives to just come in and wreak havoc in our lives. Hashtag ask me how I know. So number two, while we are waiting, right, we already asked God to help us to be still. Being still simply means being willing to wait, right? And so these are some things we can do. Trust God, repent of sin. And number three, find scriptures to remind us how to wait. Find scriptures to remind us how to wait. And I gave you all one this morning, Psalm 27, 14. All right, so you go to the word and see what the word says concerning that. And you meditate on that. So number three, find scriptures that remind. Is this, am I helping anybody this morning? Am I hope is this helping anybody this morning? Y'all type a three in the comments. We're on number three. Can you? Am I helping somebody this morning? Y'all type a number three in the comments. Listen, I know it's Monday and it's early. <laughs> I know it's Monday. Could let me before I move on to let before I move on. Let me see y'all type a number three in the comments. So number three, find scriptures that remind us how to wait. Find scriptures that remind us how to wait. Oh, Deuteronomy 10, 18. Why did I write that down? What does Deuteronomy 10, 18? Deuteronomy 10, 18 was another verse that I wrote down. All right. So number four, y'all type a four. Oh, you need number two. Um, I didn't give a scripture. I, I didn't give a scripture for all of these, um, but some of the scriptures that I gave kind of go along with this and you can kind of um, just put them together if you want to. So number one was trust God, right? Lots of scriptures on trusting God. Number two, repent of sin. I guess you can use 1 John 1, 9, 1 John 1, 9. Um, and then number three, find scriptures that remind us how to wait. And I'll leave you all to go do that. Lots of scriptures on how to wait on the Lord. Gave you all one this morning um, out of the five scriptures. And then number five, number four, uh, we're on number four. Uh, this is huge. We can use our gifts to serve others. We use our gifts to serve others. This is huge because it helps us to get the focus off of us. It helps us to get the focus off of us. So when I tell you all, um, and that's why it's so important for me to continue to show up and to serve in the way that I do, because it helps me to get the focus off of me. And y'all, when I tell you, um, uh, listen, all of 2000, uh, 2015, like 2016, 2017, those were really, 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 really hard years for me. And as I still was continuing to show up, still being consistent, still being faithful, and even with those being the hardest times, half of you all didn't even know what was going on, but I was still showing up, still serving, still leading book studies, still leading Bible studies, still running different kind of groups, still showing up and still serving. It helps us to take the focus off of us right? While we're waiting on God, while we're trying to be still, while we're patiently waiting. So serving is important. Y'all type in the comments, serving is important. Y'all type a number five in the comments. So what are we talking about this morning? Some things that we can do while we wait on the Lord, while we learn how to be still, allow God to fight for us, 
if we're, you know, learning how, if this could be us waiting uh, on God to answer a prayer for us, whatever it is, just learning how to wait. And, and instead of us being anxious, worried, is he going to come through? Is it going to happen? These are some things that we can do instead. Y'all type in the comments, instead, right? So number one was trust God while we're waiting. Yes, yes, it is serving. It serving. It, it is very important. It is. It, it is so important. Um, I believe, of course, along with the Word of God, me showing up and serving kept me sane and literally saved my life. Because if I didn't have a reason to get up, right? If I didn't have, listen, I probably wouldn't have got up, but that's a whole nother story. It might have taken everything in me <laughs> during those harder times to get up, but I got up, right? And so serving is so important. That's why I'm just so passionate about serving. Serving is so important. So again, we're talking about what we can do while we wait on the Lord. Number one was trust God, repent of sin, um, find scriptures that remind us of how to wait. Number four, use the gifts that God gave us to serve others. So if you are not serving, ask him, how can you serve? How can you use your gifts to serve others? And then number five, I'll type a five in the comments and then we're done. I'll type a five in the comments. Practice patience. And I use the word practice because I know for me, I had to practice. And I always say this, the more we practice something, the easier it gets. Hi, Mika, how are you? Um, the more we practice something, the easier it gets. So we need to practice patience. And in that time, also us needing to remind ourselves that God's timing is perfect, right? God's timing is perfect. God's timing is perfect. So um, I have one declaration here. It says, um, our declaration for today. I, I know I did not do good with my water. I was so busy reading. I was in the, I didn't do any of my routine this morning. Um, you know what? I realized we didn't have a lot of commentary this morning. And usually during the commentary, I'll kind of stop and, and drink some water. So I did not do good today. I need to finish this. Um, our declaration for today is, I can't find you. All right. I decree and declare that I will wait patiently on the Lord and let him fight for me. That's our declaration today. I decree and declare that I will wait patiently on the Lord and let him fight for me. I'll type that in the comments. I decree and declare that I will wait patiently on the Lord and let him fight for me. So that's all I wrote down. Let me see. Why did I write down? Um, so anyone have anything to share or add to, um, what I said this morning? I have like two minutes before I have to hop off. Hang on. Let me find this verse. Dang. Hmm, that's not the right one. Waiting for y'all's comments. Good morning, Lisa. Y'all are quiet this morning. Y'all are quiet this morning. Yes, God's timing is perfect. Yes, it is. I decree and there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was like, someone type in a declaration. Y'all are quiet. All right. So it looks like y'all are good. No more comments. I hate drinking out of bottles. I like my straw on live, but excuse me, y'all. I gotta. <laughs> I don't drink. I'm not a drinker. I drink water. I was about to say, I gotta turn up. <laughs> but I was like, I better not say that. <laughs> I turn up bottles of water. That's all I turn up. All right, I thought that was funny. That was funny to me, so I'll just laugh myself. <laughs> I thought it was funny to me. <laughs> I'm like, it's all right, I'll just laugh all by myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so y'all are typing in. 
All right, let's go. Ooh, y'all made, y'all, it was rough this morning. Y'all, y'all were quiet this morning. It, it was, y'all, y'all, listen, y'all tried to make this rough for me this morning, but all is well. I believe that you all were blessed by what I shared. Like, that's right, turn up. <laughs> listen, turn up bottles of water. Um, I'm not a drinker, but I do remember um, as a young child, my mother, um, what is the name of that beer? Old English. Old English. It was Old English, and then my dad drunk Colt 45. Is that a such thing? And the brown Colt 45. And I remember I would take sips of their beer. And back then, it used to be able to go to the store and just buy beer. I don't know how they allowed that, um, but I remember we would always go to the store and um, buy my mother and father's beer. I believe it was, hold on, Coke 45. I, I'm, I know that that's what it is. Why, you know what? <laughs> I, and I, and I, the Lord just reminded me of that. I know that was the name of it. And I, I would drink, I, yep, yes, it, I remember that can. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> I remember that can. So I did, I've had my share of Coke 45, I will be honest. I did, I remember. And I bless God, I thank God. And I share that because um, I, I'm really the only one in my family that does not, that does not, um, that does not drink. You know, and I'm glad because, you know, having those sips and having those drinks at a very early age, you know, that could have easily, um, I could have easily went down that trail, you know. So I, when I tell you all, I just thank God for blood, for keeping me, for covering me and protecting me from a lot of things. And just so thankful because my story truly could have um, turned out another way and it didn't. But I think it was because... Um, I saw what all of the alcohol did to a lot of my family members. I always remembered saying, I don't want to be like that. That will never be me. And so I, 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 not only do I remember that can, I can really remember that, even remember the taste of it even now. And I just thank God for taking that taste out of my mouth for that. You know, my story really, truly could have ended up being another way. And because we had access to, you know, that the, the beer, the alcohol, you know, and different types of other things that came into the house, um, you know, there were other siblings that went down that trail. And I just thank God that I didn't, you know, I thank God that I didn't. But I did have to ask him to help me because I do remember being very, very, very judgmental, very judgmental. Um, very judgmental of those, you know, that did drink being real, really harsh. And I think a lot of that came from my anger and feeling like, you know, the alcohol and the drugs is what ruined uh, my family, right? And so being very judgmental and having to even ask God to help me um, and having no compassion. When I say judgmental, having no compassion. Like, well, if they don't want to drink, they need to just quit. If they don't want to do drugs, no, 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 no. And it, not realizing it wasn't that easy. It wasn't that simple. But anyway, 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 I just thank God because my story could have turned out another way and it didn't. I could have been strung out on alcohol, strung out on all types of drugs. You know, I remember seeing that stuff, you know, and, 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 and having access to that stuff as a child. And I just thank God for his protection, covering me, keeping me. I just, I just bless God, y'all, I'm telling you. Because I could have been turning up other things besides water bottles. But y'all type in the comments, but God. So that's why that moment was a funny moment, but then also it just made me stop and say, God, I bless you. I thank you, God, that all I am turning up is water bottles, right? Because I could have been turning up some other kind of bottles, but God. All right, let me hop off of here. I love y'all. I just love God. Just so thankful. Thank y'all for letting me get that little laugh. I'm like, it was funny to me, but then immediately went from being funny to I thank you, God, that that's all I'm turning up, you know? Mm. 
Mm, God is good. I love y'all. Let me hop off of here. I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye.